Good afternoon from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Big news today. First of all, 19 cars have qualified. Tom Sneva has set a new one and four lap record, and A.J. Foyt has no chance for the pole. Tom Carnegie along with Greg Roberts. And there's a final inspection of the track going on right now as we had rain about an hour and 15 minutes ago and the track is almost dry. We're almost ready to start qualifications. The big story, Sneva and Foyt, right, Craig? That's right. Uh, Tom Sneva, of course, has worked with us on our track side and qualification reports for the past two years, and I think we've been pretty good luck for him, and he's been good luck for us because both years he has won the pole and today the once again the one lap and four lap records his first lap the fastest in excess of 203 miles per hour and I think you have the exact run there 203.620 and then the four lap average 202 plus so it's been quite a day for car number one and you'll be seeing that run a little bit later on but as Tom mentioned an hour and a half rain delay and we're just about set to get underway again and the first guy going out will be Salt Walter in car number 77 and we'd like you to see that live our home station, Channel 6 here in Indianapolis, is still involved in the baseball it game. So uh, that's too. that's happened to us two years in a row, or an extra inning ball game. So the rest of the stations on the network, uh, don't feel left out. You'll see everything there is to see today. And as Tom previously mentioned, 19 cars have qualified. It's been a very, very safe day of qualification. I think that's very important. That's been that first spin, that first sign of trouble. I think Dick Simon said he tapped the wall on his run, but he didn't get in any trouble. It didn't stop his run. On the pole, Tom Steva. His speed average, 202.156 miles an hour. Danny Angaios alongside. And then Rick Mears, who was a teammate of Tom Sneva, on the outside of the front row. Now we should talk about that A.J. Foyt situation. Of course, you know, everybody's saying he went 206 miles an hour late yesterday, 208. Maybe he did. And if certain, certainly he thought he was going to uh, go for the pole. But something happened. Made a mistake. A.J. admitted it. That's right. Uh, actually, I'm not certainly technically be qualified to be able to explain what happened but it had to do with not getting enough boost for his car it was not set the valve was not set at the proper pressure uh, they expected to have 25 they were getting 19 he shut down right after he took the green came back around there was a, a long dis discussion with uh, the people involved and Tom Binford and the technical people as it turned out AJ was charged with one official attempt the car had to go back to the end of the line. There's still a possibility he might get out today, but with that one attempt charged, he would not have uh, any possibility of gaining the pole. Uh, the pace car, the Corvette pace car, has just returned to the pits. Actually, it was the wastegate. Uh, he said it's a breaks of the game. He said his weight gaze, wastegate pressure was set mistakenly at 19 instead of 25, so it's his fault. That's what he says. And it's great to admit, uh, great we'll to hear be, that AJ uh, made a mistake. That's right. right. He was very gracious about stepping up to the microphone. I think everyone was rather uh, trying to stay out of his way yeah. because they, they felt that he was obviously very angry. As it turned out, he wasn't. He admitted it was his fault. And we'll be showing you uh, that uh, incident when A.J. got up to the public address system. Tom has to go to work, I think, That's here right. shortly and uh, get Salt Walter rolling. As we mentioned, about an hour and a half rain delay. So uh, we want to bring you all the live action that we can. And perhaps uh, we're just about set. And I think I hear the whistles. The pace car is in. And they're all set to go. And uh, Salt's firing it up. Or at least I thought he was firing it up. Sounded like it shut down again. Uh, he's ready to go, so I'll be seeing you later, Greg. Okay, okay. Tom Carnegie's going to go and take over the public address as he's done now for some 31 years here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Let's get the cameras on car number 77 from Dayton, Ohio, Salt Walther. And we'll pick up the public address system. And we want you to stand by, of course, and we will have that fine run of Tom Sneva in excess of 202 miles an hour for the 10-mile qualification run. Let's now watch Salt Walther. He has driven in 41 championship races. The car name is a Dayton Walther Special. The entrant is Wall Motor Inc., Dayton, Ohio. It's a turbocharged Cosworth. The chassis is a 1977 McLaren. We're watching now Salt Walther. How many 
saw Walter working the groove nicely over in turn two, running maybe 20, 25 miles per hour, taking his time before he picks up the throttle. While Saul Walter is out shaking that car down a bit and getting it warmed up for his qualification attempt, let's run over some of the speeds that we have so far today. Johnny Rutherford was out first, 197.098 miles per hour, the four-lap average for Johnny Rutherford. Then it was Larry Dixon in car number 80. Larry qualified at 193.343. Gordy Johncock got out third, 195.883. Then Dick Simon, a nice ride in car number 17, 192.967. Gary Irvin out of Lafayette, Indiana, went out, no attempt charge. He was waved off on uh, actually uh, the third of the warm up laps. And Steve Krizilov qualified at 191.255. Larry Cannon went out and did have one attempt charge. Larry uh, took uh, about three quarters of one lap and then came down inside the yellow line and brought it back in. Tom Bagley, a rookie, qualifies at 190.941. Then it was Tom Sneeve out in the Norton Spirit car number one. And he made the 10-mile trip in 2 minutes, 58 and 800 seconds, 202.156 for the 10-mile qualification. His first lap, the fastest official lap ever run at the Motor Speedway, 203.620 miles per hour. Then his teammate, Rick Mears, in 71, went right out after Tom did and had a four-lap average of 200.078. And right now, Rick Mears, the rookie, is sitting outside of row number one. Janet Guthrie had a nice ride. She is qualified this afternoon at 190.325. Wally Dallenbach was then out, 195.228. Danny Ungaius, a nice job, 200.122, his best lap, his first 202.931. Then A.J. went out, had the technical problem, and came in. And then right after he came in, George Snyder was waved on the fourth lap. He, of course, a teammate of A.J. Foyt. And some of the boys in the Gilmore Foyt crew misread one of the clocks. So they waved him in, and really, they did not want to do that. So it hasn't been A.J.'s day. Salt Walther still on the track warming that car up quickly, running over some more speeds today. John Mailer has qualified car number 39 at 189.723. Al Unser, a nice ride. Car number two, 196.474. Gary Bettenhausen was waved on the fourth lap. Bill Vukovic waved on the third lap. Bubby Jones waved on the fourth lap. Then Johnny Parsons qualified the Lindsey Hopkins car, number 16, 194.280. Bobby Olivero was waved on the third lap. Bobby said it was pushing so bad he could barely get through the turn, so they brought it in. Sheldon Kinzer out of Bloomington, Illinois, Bloomington, Indiana, excuse me. Sheldon, 192.051. Mike Hiss qualifying for Mario Andretti. Car number seven, Mike, a nice, nice ride. All four laps in excess of 194 miles per hour, 194.647. And we might point out that Mario Andretti has gained the pole in the Belgian Grand Prix. Mario in Belgium, he has the pole for that race in Formula One. Mike Hiss, 194.647. Spike Gelhausen, 193.25. Let's pick up the run. And he's still out there warming up. 19 qualifiers. Front row he is at the still moment. warming up. Okay, Spike Gelhausen, formerly of Jasper, Indiana, now residing in Speedway, 190.325. Tom Bigelow then qualified at 189.115, and that is the slowest car of the 19 that have qualified. Tom Bigelow, 189.115. Roger McCluskey got the checkered flag just before the rains came, and that AMC stock block engine performed beautifully, the best it has all month. Roger, a very nice ride. The four-lap average, 192.256. And right now, Roger is the 12th fastest qualifier. Let's watch uh, Salt now coming out. The run begins for Salt Walther. And there he goes into the first turn. David Salt Walther just below that white line as he works that first corner. Moves up to within two feet of that outside retaining wall and now dives into turn number two. So looking for his sixth 500 start. We saw some smoke coming off the rear of the car that time as it came off the second corner. We'll keep an eye on it. Halfway around on the first lap, Salt Walther in car number 77 sets up and dives into turn number three, just below the white line once again. Let's the car drift out against the outside retaining wall and tucks it down into turn number four. Rolls through that corner. He'll be checking with the crew as he 
Heads down that straightaway to complete lap number one. Once again, we saw some spray or smoke coming from the rear of that car as he exited turn number two, and we'll keep an eye on it this time around as he moves through turn number two now. A little higher in the groove that time off the corner and down the back straightaway, and this time no sign of smoke and halfway around on lap number two. Here we go, time and speed report, Salt Walther, car number 77, 47 and 3,900 seconds. And the speed, almost 190 miles an hour, 189.913. Once again, checking with the crew at the top of the pit area. Two laps down and two laps to go for Salt Walter. Rides low into turn number one, just below that white line, and once again, very close to the outside retaining wall, perhaps 12 to 18 inches off the concrete. Low again through that second corner, past the sweeps and down that five eighths of a mile back straight away. Works about two car widths off that outside retaining wall, now sets up for turn number three. It's a little bit slower, 47 and 60 hundred seconds. 189.076 miles per hour, second lap. Now he negotiates the fourth corner and we're looking for him at the top of the straightaway. Here he is. Checks the pit board. And Pat Vedan has the white flag signifying one lap to go for Saul Walther, trying to become the 20th qualifier, looking for his sixth Indy start. He's already over into turn number two and rolls through that corner nicely. Off the corner and down the back straightaway. A half lap to go for David Salt Walther. Third lap time and speed report, and will he accept his run? We'll soon know. Third lap, 47 and 4,700 seconds speed, 189.593. Let's see what the decision is. He negotiates turn four. We have him in view off the corner looking for the crew. And there's the yellow flag, Tom. So that will be one attempt against car number 77 with Salt Walther. Well, the first lap was 189.9. Second lap, 189. Third lap, 189.5. So he would have been in the 189 mile an hour bracket, but elected not to go with it. Well, the next scheduled driver is Pancho Carter out of Brownsburg, Indiana, in the Budweiser Lightning. But we know that he's been having some starter problems down here at the line and may not be able to get the car going. So we'll let you know. So we still have 19 qualifiers. This is Craig Roberts back live at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Tom Carnegie working the public address as Salt Walther waved on his first attempt. If you recall, he did that last year and then came back and actually accepted a uh, speed considerably slower than he made on his first attempt. Next up, a car very, very capable of running quickly. The Budweiser car, the Budweiser Lightning, driven by Poncho Carter. John Martin is scheduled up next, but I'm told he has been pulled out of the line. After that, it would be Joe Saldana. So next up, Poncho Carter, and we will stay live here as long as we can bring you live qualification attempts before we go back to the taped highlights of earlier in the day. In the event you just joined us, Tom Sneva sitting on the pole right now in the Norton Spirit as he did last year. Inside of row number one, Danny Ungaius in car number 25 and outside of number one, Car number 71, Rick Mears, the rookie. In row two, inside, Johnny Rutherford. Next to him, Al Unser. Outside, Gordy Johncock. The next row, car number six, driven by Wally Dallenbach. And then inside the third row is the car that Mike Hiss qualified. However, when Mario Andretti comes back, Mario will start 33rd in the field. Outside of that third row, car number 16, driven by Johnny Parsons. So the next attempt... We now have a yellow light, so apparently there is something on the track. The pace car is going to pull out and make a track inspection. So at this point, 
We are still awaiting the attempt of Poncho Carter, and Poncho has been sitting there for an awful long time. We'll keep it right here. This is Craig Roberts, live at the Indianapolis Ladies Motor Speedway. We would like to welcome Channel 6, our home base station, as well as some of the other stations on the network that may have joined us late because of the length of today's baseball game. Going over a bit what has happened, Tom Sneva has the pole at this point, and A.J. Foyt has no chance to get the pole because of a defective valve. He made one attempt. And Tom Sneva, the one and four lap record holder for the second year in a row, is now at the public address with Tom Carnegie. Let's go down there and pick that up. The effort with the Norton Spirit. Uh, we were a little bit surprised on, with the track conditions the way they were, but we're real happy right now. Just everything went your way today, didn't it? Well, yeah, they really did. You know, the car uh, ran a lot quicker than we thought it might be able to, and we were able to be fairly consistent with it. So uh, right now we're in a pretty good shape. You got some responsibilities on the Indianapolis Motor Speedway television networks. Go on down now, Tom. It's great to see a fine young man like this with all those honors. You're, you're just a champion. That's all there is to it, Tom. Well, it helps working with guys like you, Tom. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Tom Sneva, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give him a big hand. There he goes. Tom Sneva. New one and four lap records that he set today. Okay, as long as Tom was talking about that run, let's watch it now. As Tom Sneva in the Norton Spirit car number one watched the first lap, the fastest official lap ever run at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Let's pick it up. Nicely into one, just down to the line with the left side tires. Let's watch one of the really fast ones. But uh, maybe a foot off the wall going through the south chute. Moves through two very quickly. Down to the line. Looks like he swiveled coming off of two. Looks like the rear end wanted to get away from him. Maybe it might have just been an illusion. He's about halfway down the back stretch, setting up now for number three. Way on the high side of the groove, coming through four as he's or coming through the chute, up close to the wall. Now he's through four and on to the main straightaway. And here comes the track record holder. Tom Sneva to complete his first qualifying lap for 1978. Running very quickly is Tom Sneva down to the line going through one. Looks like he might. I think last year he came close to brushing the south shoot wall and he may have come close again this year on that lap. Comes off of two a little better than he did the last time. About 10 feet away from the back stretch wall getting ready for number three Tom. And it's a new track record. 44 and 20 hundred seconds, 203.620. 203.620, Tom Steva. And he's still really moving as he comes through. And now he's a little farther down under the line as he went through one that time. About six inches off the wall as he went through the south chute, down to the line, going through two. Moving down the back stretch, moving a little, a little higher down the back stretch now, maybe eight feet off the wall as he goes into the third turn. Now going for the four lap record, a new record. It's 44 and 4300 seconds, 
202.566 second lap. About to complete his third lap and get the white flag from Pat Vidal, Tom Sneva. On his fourth lap, down under the line a little bit with the left side tires. Still about six inches away from the wall as he went through the chute and lined up for number two down to the line on two and comes off the second corner. Still staying fairly high as he goes down the back stretch. Tom Sneva getting ready for the third turn once again. Here it is, third lap time in speed report. A record is about to be set. Keep it in there, Tom. 44 and 60 hundred seconds. 201.794. And he's on to the main straightaway. Once again, still the track record holder. Tom Sneva gets the checkered flag from Pat Vedan. So that was the story, and Tom Steve is sitting with me right now. Your uh, partner, Rick Mears, had a pretty nice ride today, too, didn't he? He really did. You know, it was very impressive. Uh, somebody that young shouldn't be going that fast. <laughs> I asked uh, Tom right after the run, uh, actually, I asked your lovely wife, Sharon, if, if you had that much enthusiasm for cutting the grass, and she said you, you were considerably slower at that, that occupation. It's tough to get much faster when you pull them one blade at a time. I know? understand that. We're going to go to a commercial and then come back with the A.J. Foyt story. Coming back, stand by for more reports on today's action from the 500-mile speedway. And on the track now is two-time 500 winner, Johnny Rutherford. You can be a winner, too, when you play Burger Chef's exciting and challenging 500 racing facts game. Just buy any sandwich, fry, and drink combination, and you'll get a game card that will test your racing knowledge. Boy, I got a tough one. Hey, this is great. I just won. I've got the best one. Who won the 76 500? Be a winner. Play 500 Racing Facts only at Burger Chef. Now True Value Hardware Stores offer a selection of beauty aids for your lawn to keep it looking its best. This weed eater needy trimmer edges, trims, mows, and sweeps a 16-inch path where the mower can't reach. The Black & Decker double-edged 16-inch hedge trimmer keeps shrubs and evergreens neatly trimmed. And this Rockwell lawn edger and trimmer cuts a neat, narrow edge along walks and driveways. Beautify your lawn and garden with the help of quality name brand tools from participating True Value Hardware Store. When American Fletcher said, Ed, we want to be your bank, I said, you may say that when I have money, but what about when I need money? Well, they said they could give me a loan for just about anything I needed without a lot of hassle. Then they told me I was worth more money than I thought. And I said, American Fletcher, you want me? You got me. We want to be your bank. If you really want to say something in the Yellow Pages, you need the right arrangement. To promote reliability, brand names and authorized service, the hours you're open, the completeness of your service, your location, and don't forget illustration and copy, because if you say the right things, your Yellow Pages ad can make some beautiful music. Say something to your composer, your Yellow Pages salesperson. It's Craig Roberts along with Tom Steve and Tom Carnegie back live at the Motor Speedway. We've had 19 qualifiers. I may have neglected to mention that when we joined the rest of the network after the baseball game. And Tom Sneva sitting on the pole in $5,000 richer, courtesy of Budweiser at this point. We've got John Martin on the track right now. Apparently, Pancho Carter had starter problems and had to be uh, pulled out and had to go back to the end of the line. And uh, we'll have Bobby Unser coming up live very shortly. But we did mention that A.J. Foyt had some problems. And let's let A.J. explain exactly what happened. Here at the starting line, A.J. Foyt. A.J., everybody wants to know what happened. Well, we checked the wastegate, and it was uh, the valve was controlling it right. There was nothing wrong with the valve, and uh, for some reason, the wastegate wasn't set at 25 pounds cracking pressure. It was 19 and a half pounds, and I usually set it myself, so uh, I guess it's my screw-up. Nothing new. <laughs> nothing new? <laughs> well, it's like Snyder. Uh, it was just like George Snyder's car. We wanted to take 190, and uh, one of the boys read the watches wrong. They waved him off, and I said, when it rains, it pours. So I guess we'll be back tomorrow. Well, now uh, you're back in the line, and uh, maybe Yep can qualify today after everybody else is out. But, of course, that eliminates you from the pole. 
Is that right? Well, that's what they said, and you got to go with the decision because I did take the green, and that's charge one attempt, and uh, that's the breaks of the game. You win some and you lose some, and I'm no beginner at this here, and naturally uh, I wanted a fair shot at it, and they checked the deal and everything was right. Well, AJ, we know you're disappointed, but everybody's going to stick around and see if you still can get that speed. Okay, that's what A.J. had to say, a little technical problem. A lot of people say he may have out-engineered himself, but he, he was the first to admit he made a very honest mistake. So that's the way it goes. And, of course, uh, his, his driving partner, Ziggy Snyder, was pulled in, waved in, and uh, one of the crew misread the clock. So it has not been his day, to say the least. That's too bad for Ziggy, too, because he's a fine driver, and, uh, you know, I'm sure he'll get another chance, but it puts a little more pressure on, on the whole team. And, you know, it was unfortunate. I wish uh, AJ would have had a chance, because, you know, it takes a little bit away when, you know, everybody doesn't get that shot that they're looking for. But uh, hopefully he'll get her up tomorrow, and we'll see what he can do. Okay, a very happy Roger Penske walking around the pit area, as you might expect, two of his cars sitting in the front row, two, over 200 miles per hour. And let's take a look now at the run of the rookie in car number 71, Rick Mears. Eyes on him now, Rick Mears, and the green flag is out, and he's on the run. Another Penske chassis in the hands of Rick Mears. Apparently we're having some difficulties, technical difficulties with the tape on the Rick Mears run. I talked to Rick after it was over and, uh, you know, a guy that qualifies over 200 miles an hour is rather non-pulsed by the whole thing. He said he had a lot of fun and uh, uh, it seemed, though, that it took him an awful long time to complete the four laps. What did you think? He ran in under three minutes. Well, it didn't take him much longer, that's for sure. And, uh, yeah, you got to give him a lot of credit. Uh, being a young driver, he does, does use his head very well. and so. You know, because of that, like I mentioned before, he's going to be a great driver. I wanted to run over some of the other uh, speeds that we have, uh, but before we do that, let's pause briefly for station identification. WRTV Channel 6, Indianapolis. John Martin has gone out now to uh, warm up car number 28, and uh, he and Joe Saldana would be actually be the only two left to complete the first day draw. Now we have the difficulty with the Rick Mears tape all cleared up, and let's watch the run. Rick Mears, car 71. Eyes on him now, Rick Mears, and the green flag is out, and he's on the run. Another Penske chassis in the hands of Rick Mears, almost an identical line to Tom Sneva's going through one. Not quite so close to the south shoot wall as he runs by there, down to the line going through two. Doesn't run quite as close to the wall going through the south shoot. His line down the back stretch is almost identical to Sneva's. Fairly high, really. Eight to ten feet off the wall, he comes through three, gets down just onto the line with the left front wheel. Still somewhat farther off the north shoot wall than was Tom Sneva on his really quick laps. But Rick Mears is still obviously going quite quickly as he comes around to complete his first qualifying lap ever at Indianapolis. Just down under the line as he goes through one. A little closer to the wall, maybe a foot and a half away from it now as he goes through the south chute, down to the line going through two. He'll run a little quicker groove, perhaps. A little farther away from the wall as he comes down the back stretch. Changing his line a little bit. The wind may be affecting him. There is some debris running down the back stretch, too, some papers. And it's over 200 miles an hour. Rick Mears, 44 and 9,500 seconds, speed 200.222. What a ride for the rookie. Obviously, the fastest rookie ever at Indianapolis. Rick Mears completing his second lap. He's halfway through this qualifying attempt. Pretty much the same line through the first turn. Much the same through the south shoot as he was on the second lap. Down to the line again through two. Rick adjusting somewhat to the wind conditions. Comes off the wall again as he comes down the back stretch and sets up for number three. 
45 and 200 seconds, just barely under 200 miles an hour. 199.911 second lap, Rick Mears. And he's off the fourth corner onto the main straightaway. Pat Bedan has the white flag out, signifying one lap remaining on Rick Mears' first ever qualifying attempt here. Been very consistent going through the first turn. He's got a nice line. It was identical on all laps. The last three has been about the same going through the south shoot and through number two. He has had to make some adjustments as he goes down the back stretch. This time he's a little closer to the line he took on the second lap as he gets ready for the third turn. Well, it's almost to the second lap speed of other first lap speed. 44 and 9600 seconds. 200.178 and he's going for a 200 mile an hour average so let's hope he makes it he's on to the main straightaway hustling that Penske race car past Pat Bedan's checkered flag and Rick Mears has qualified for the 1978 Indianapolis 500 mile race okay we're back live John Martin in car number 28 on the track right now attempting to become the 20th qualifier Tom any thoughts about John Martin well, John's in a, uh, an older Eagle, but they've done some modifications to it. They've stretched it out, made the wheelbase a little bit longer. They feel that's going to help them a little bit. Uh, they've made a lot of changes throughout the week. And, uh, you know, I, I think they've been gaining all week. But uh, obviously, they're not probably going as fast as they'd like right now. Sure, John is not going to like this one. 49 and 8,300 seconds, speed 180.614. Well, that's by far the slowest lap that anyone has run today, and I know John can't possibly like that. 180 miles an hour, the slowest lap that anyone has run. Well, we do have some time, and while John is out there, let's quickly run over some of the uh, speeds that we have at this point. Since our, some of our stations joined us late, as I pointed out, Johnny Rutherford was first out and ran 197.098, his top lap, 199.778. Larry Dixon, 193.343. Gordy Johncock at 195.883. Dick Simon had a nice ride today. Tom, I don't know if you got a chance to look at this or not, but Dick Simon ran a 17 car at 192.967. Very nice. Really, and especially considering Dick uh, earlier in the uh, week, or early in the practice, they uh, scuffed their white wall the tires coming off of four in a practice lap, and it se seemed to upset the chassis just a little bit. Tom Carnegie making the announcement right now that John Martin is actually the last of the first day qualifiers. He has been waved off, and that officially makes Tom Sneeve of the pole sitter for 1978. Back to back years, and that's not too bad. Stand by for more reports on today's action from the 500 mile speedway. When American Fletcher said, Peg, we want to be your bank, I said, then show me a checking account that won't cost me anything to use. And they said that with a combo account, I'd get no service charge checking if I kept $500 in my combo savings, plus a monthly statement that listed all my checks in order. So I said, American Fletcher, you really know how to treat a girl. We want to be your bank. And on the track now is two-time 500 winner, Johnny Rutherford. You can be a winner, too, when you play Burger Chef's exciting and challenging 500 racing facts game. Just buy any sandwich, fry, and drink combination, and you'll get a game card that will test your racing knowledge. Boy, I got a tough one. Hey, this is great. I just won. I've got the best one. Who won the 76 500? Be a winner. Play 500 racing facts only at Burger Chef. Now, True Value Hardware Stores offer a selection of health and beauty aids for your lawn and garden. Choose quality ortho products like the Lawn Sprayer, Weed Be Gone, or Insect Spray to protect against bugs and ugly weeds. Or choose these True Temper Head Shears or Grass Shears to keep shrubs and grass neatly trimmed. And use this Melnor Garden Sprinkler to gently water a 50-foot circle over your garden. Protect and beautify your lawn and garden with supplies from participating True Value Hardware Store. If you really want to get results in the Yellow Pages, you really ought to say something in the Yellow Pages. Say something about your hours and location. Say something about your products and service. Say something about your company's reliability. And make sure you say something to your Yellow Pages salesperson. Together, you may create a new arrangement of an old favorite tune. Craig Roberts, along with Tom Sneva and Tom Carnegie, back at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. 
Bobby Unser in the Arco Graphite Eagle, car number 48, about going out right now to warm up for a qualification attempt. Let me run quickly down the scoring pylon as we have a Tom Steve inside row number one. Next to him, Danny Gaius and Rick Mears. The second row, we've got Johnny Rutherford. And next to him, Al Unser, then Gordy Johncock, Wally Dallenbach, Mike Hiss is qualified car number seven. Mario Andretti will drive that, of course. After that, it's Johnny Parsons. Then car number 80, Larry Dixon. Then Dick Simon in 17. After that, Roger McCluskey, car number 11. Sheldon Kinzer, car number 24. Steve Krisiloff is qualified, car number 40. After that, car number 22, the rookie Tom Bagley. Then 51, Janet Guthrie. Spike Gelhausen and Janet Guthrie, by the way, had exactly the same speeds, 190.325. So Spike is right behind Janet. And then right behind Spike is his driving partner, John Mailer. He qualified car number 39. And the slowest qualifier right now is Tom Bigelow in car number 43. And that speed, if I can recall it, 189.115. Tom, some of these guys are going out on the qualification attempts, and Bobby is still warming up right now. We might explain that why they go out and, and what would appear to be waste an attempt, but they're really still sorting the car out at this late date, aren't they? Exactly right. You know, with the limited amount of time we've had for practice, uh, these guys want to take advantage of every chance they can get on the racetrack. So they'll go out uh, knowing that they might not be up to speed, but they've got a different combination, uh, maybe some different springs or a different sway bar combination, different tire staggers or whatever. And they just want to try and feel it out and see if that helps the car. And then uh, it might give them a direction. Uh, of uh, you know what they want to do with the car and, and maybe even they've gone enough the right way to uh, get it up to speed and make a qualifying attempt so they're just taking advantage of all time and okay here we go the run of Bobby Unser live and the run begins Bobby Unser car number 48 out of Albuquerque New Mexico through the first corner and still puts a bit of a cushion between that outside retaining wall and the short chute and the right side of the car in front of the suites off the second corner and down that back straightaway. Had it not been for the rain out last weekend, Bobby would have likely qualified the Lightning chassis. But had ample time this week to work out the bugs in this new Eagle. Bob now in the short shoot, the north end of the speedway. Now negotiates turn number four and we pick him up at the top of the straightaway. Dan Gurney and the crew has the pit board out. Bobby checks in and completes lap number one. Rides just off that white line in the first corner. Once again, about three feet off that outside retaining wall in the short shoot. Nicely through the second corner and down the back straightaway. Halfway around on lap number two. Here we go with the time and speed report. Lap number one. 46 and 3200 seconds, 194.301 miles an hour. 194, 301, lap number two. Bobby now works turn number four off the corner. We have him at the top of the main straightaway. Once again, checks in with the crew. And down the complete lap number two. Number 48 actually has a T on the car. Bobby Unser. right along that white line over in turn two nicely off the corner and sets her down that back straightaway riding about two car widths off the wall and he picks it up quite a little bit second time around 46 and 1500 seconds 195.016 Bobby Unzer and now we see Bobby off the fourth corner and down to receive the white flag from starter Pat Vedan. One lap to go for the two-time Indy champion. Once again riding right along that white line in turn one. Still somewhat of a cushion as he rides through that short chute off the second corner and down the back straightaway. Just over a half lap to go for Bobby Gunser. 46 and 2600 seconds, 194.553. Bobby now works the short shoot, sets up for turn number four, rolls through that corner. He's now off the corner and down to complete his qualification run. The crew waves him on, and there's the checkered flag from Pat Fadan, and Bobby Unser has now qualified for his 16th 
500. So there you saw it, uh, Tom. I think he may have had the windshield wipers there uh, coming off four. It's starting to rain again. We might talk a little bit about the fact that Bobby Unser has really been uh, working very hard with Dan Gurney on two different cars this year. And if I'm not mistaken, that's the brand new Eagle. Is it your opinion that they've got the gearbox or the rear end or whatever it was that was causing some problems that he could run 500 miles in that car? Well, I don't think they have a whole lot of confidence in that rear end right yet. Oh, my God. We're it is wet. definitely raining. Yeah, this, gang. this is a shower, no <laughs> doubt about it. I think it's past us now, though. But anyway, it's an interesting story besides the rain. Uh, <laughs> here we are talking about a brand new Eagle, and it is raining like crazy. We'll keep it here, though. I just saw Mr. Foyt run by. He was smiling. <laughs> I don't know, but anyway, back to the Eagle story. It's amazing that uh, a team like that is sort of forced into a position to, to run a car in the race or attempt to qualify a car for the race that uh, they don't have a whole lot of confidence in because they don't have much testing on that particular car. And uh, because of the weather, it forces them to take a tip any time they get a shot at it. And that's probably why they went with Eagle. Well, I didn't hear the final uh, four-lap average. It was in excess, I believe, of 194.6. So for 10 miles anyway, they've got that thing really put together. Uh, while it is raining right now, I would seriously doubt if we would have any more live attempts today. I can't really say that that wouldn't happen, but it's really coming down right now. So let's go to a commercial break, and then we'll be back and show you some of the qualification attempts earlier in the day. Stand by for more reports from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. When American Fletcher said, Helen, we want to be your bank. I said, fine. But first, tell me what you're going to do for me. And they said they could help me plan for the future with seven different savings programs. Then when my needs change, they could change my savings plan, too. So I said, American Fletcher, we've got a great future together. We want to be your bank. We're back live at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. This is Craig Roberts along with Tom Sneva, Tom Carnegie just coming in to join us. It is raining presently. The 20th qualifier, though, did take the checkered flag before the rains came, and that was Bobby Unser at 194.6. Nice ride for him. Now, Mr. Sneva, I would like to tell you that we are about to go to the young man that you, I think, had some second thoughts about how he was going to qualify, and that is car number 25, Danny well, Agaius. Let's watch again. the run of the Interscope the racing entry. I'd like to see it. We know you Off the turn, into the short chute, and through the straightaway, back into the number two corner. A little above the line as he goes through the turn, and then down the back straightaway. About a foot and a half off the back straightaway wall, here it is, 44 and 90, 100 seconds, 200.401. Still over the 200 mile an hour mark, Danny on gas. Danny on gas, as they call him around the circuit, off the number four turn. Pat Fidan waving the white flag, one lap to go, two and a half miles, still confront Danny on gas. Follows the same groove through the number one turn. Up into the short straightaway. Brushes the wall with his rear right tire as he goes through that short chute, but hangs on to the car and is now down the back straightaway with half a lap to go. Third lap time and speed, 45 and 1300 seconds. Dropping under the 200 mile an hour mark, just barely 199.424. Let's bring this remarkable young man to the checkered flag. He's through the number four turn using all the racetrack as he comes off corner four and heads down the front straightaway. The checkered flag is out for Danny and Gaius. Here's how you ended up, at least for one lap. High to start out with, 202.931. He's seeing this for the first time, ladies and gentlemen. You're second quick. You're second quick, they're telling him. Well, it's uh, very good. I think uh, if that holds out or we uh, manage to stay somewhere close to the front, it's good for a good starting position. What about the fourth lap, Danny? We dropped down quite a bit, almost five miles an hour in between from the first to the fourth. Well, it changes a little bit out there, and uh, I decided to see if I could make all four and uh, take what we could get. 
Well, we know you led in speed most of the time around here this month, dropping off just a little qualifying here, but safely in at least that second row. All right, thank you. If not the first. 194.658 miles an hour for Bobby Unzer. Those fans remaining, let's give Bobby a hand. He playing to a small crowd all of a sudden. Okay, Craig Roberts back with Tom Stever. The rain has let up a bit and the fans are coming back in the stands, but I would seriously doubt if they'll see any more qualifying today. Bobby Unser was just interviewed on the public address system, 194.6 in the brand new Eagle. Tom, uh, we're going to take a look at the first guy who went out today, and that was Johnny Rutherford. And actually, his fastest lap, his first, 199.778, and then he really dropped off. And I believe his last lap, around 194 miles an hour. We'll take a look at that and then listen to the interview with JR. Black stretch. Fade away the white flag from Pat Vidan. Johnny Rutherford. Pretty much the same groove through one. Using a little closer, using a little more racetrack as he goes through the shot south shoot. He's already off of two and onto the back stretch. Comes down again, well off the wall, about a third of the way down, then takes it until he's just entering three, and now he's entering the third turn on this last lap. There's the third time around. It's 45 and 8400 seconds, speed dropping down considerably. 196.6 or .335 miles an hour. They're letting him take it, Tom, so we have our first qualifier of the day, Johnny Rutherford. Johnny, I don't, can you hear, can you hear me, John? We've had a lot of speculation, you know, of whether you would or you wouldn't go in this 4T. What prompted that decision, Johnny? Well, we, uh, we were kind of looking at the weather and, uh, thinking maybe that if we get any rain and we put this car in the back of the line and the way the rules read we wouldn't get a chance at all so we might miss the race so uh, the rules kind of forced us into this and uh, that's the way it is well don't you have another decision to make after a while when number four comes up again well probably not i think we'll we'll stay with this car for the race and get in solid and go race them sunday i don't think you've had a chance to see your average there it is well, it's uh, disappointing to say the least. We did much better this morning, but then uh, it's warmed up a little bit and uh, uh, it just didn't seem to run like it did this morning. So I guess we'll stay with this and get ready to race. Any particular problem on that fourth lap? It dropped considerably, Johnny. Yes, it did. It got very slippery. My, it got loose, uh, very loose, and it was hard to, to uh, maintain the speed because I was afraid I'd lose the car and crash, and we don't want to do that. It still should put you in the first one of the spots in the first four rows, don't you think? Well, I hope so. If it doesn't, we probably ought to get a high spot and watch anyway. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay, Johnny Rutherford. I think he's okay, don't you, with that average over 197? Well, he's uh, won this place a couple times, so he knows what it takes on race day. Tom, uh, you now have the official uh, run of uh, Bobby Unser and also the field average. Oh, the Bobby Unser run, 194.658 miles an hour. And right now, and I imagine that's where he'll start to be in that number 20 position. Now for the 20 qualifiers we've had so far today, and I think that's going to be all so far today, 194.658 miles an hour. That's a little bit slower than the pole car, but not too much. <laughs> right, Tom? <laughs> well, that's a pretty good field average, my friend. That's super. You know, the cars are a lot quicker this year, and, uh, you know, my average, I think I averaged, guessed about 184 to make the race, and it doesn't look like that's going to make it. Okay, we'll be back with more reports from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway after these messages. Here's a business that has exactly what you want. They've been in business 50 years, carry name brands you know and trust. They're open late, six days a week. Take every major credit card and offer free delivery. But you'll probably buy someplace else, because this is all they told you in the Yellow Pages. When American Fletcher said, Joe, we want to be your bank, I said, that's nice, but I like a bank that understands that my needs are different from the next guy's. 
Then they said, that's just the reason why they had five different checking accounts. Then they showed me one that would work just fine for me. So I said, American Fletcher, we're gonna make a great pair. We wanna be your bank. The five fastest cars in the field so far are all powered by V8 engines. And that includes Tom Sneva and the entire front row on to positions four and five with Al Unser. And then the quickest four-cylinder that's powered by uh, Drake Offey is driven by Gordon Johncock. Now let's take a look at the former champion's fourth and final lap of his qualification run. Captain, we have our third qualifier in the North American Van Lines Wildcat, Gordon Johncock. Well, Gordon. We uh, know you've uh, had a few hard days here at the track, uh, getting the speed that you wanted. Uh, but with the speed, it looks like you solved some of them, especially there on a couple of laps. And there you see the average. He's looking at it now for 195.883. Gordon? Well, we're happy with it, really. Uh, we knew we didn't have a chance for the pole. Uh, anyway with a four-cylinder so uh, we're just happy to be in the race you know we even would have taken a 190 if we'd have had to because with the weather the way it is in the first weekend of qualifying out uh, we might not get a second chance so we're tickled to death with what we got Tom do you have any idea that Gordy went that fast That's that fourth nice. lap we he was so quick we didn't even see it that was a quick <laughs> lap you know we've been sort of getting on Gordy here lately I keep telling him double your pleasure double your fun with that four cylinder and, uh, he doesn't like that too much <laughs> okay we're gonna take a look hopefully now at the fourth lap of Janet Guthrie and she had a nice ride today 190.325 let's pick up car number 51 the Texaco star through three makes an adjustment coming through the chute and sets up for number four Janet Guthrie's on the main straightaway to complete the first lap of her 1978 qualification run. <laughs> through the first turn, much like she did the first time around, about 18 inches off the wall going through the south chute. Very consistent through the first two turns and the south shoot and still comes well off the wall as she comes off of number two a little higher this time there is some adjustment going on as the drivers come off of number two and go down the back stretch here we go 47 and 1200 seconds over at 191 miles an hour fastest ever for janet guthrie 191.002 fine ride just about to complete the second lap this year. There's Janet Guthrie. Seems to be running very consistently. Not quite as far down to the line that time and a little higher through the shooter. She had to make a little adjustment coming off one. The wind may be varying just a little bit. Her line through one and the south shoot not nearly as good as it was on the first two laps she's now halfway down the back stretch and still an excellent time and speed 47 and 15 so that was Janet Guthrie's run we unfortunately will not be able to see all of it Tom I think you'll agree she had a very nice ride today well I met some fast women in my day but uh, <laughs> Janet's as fast as any of them <laughs> well with that Tom uh, <laughs> good luck <laughs> <laughs> The track has officially been closed right now because of the rain. It looks like it's going to clear up, but we've got 20 qualifiers, so there's plenty of, plenty of things going to happen tomorrow, Tom. Could be well, very interesting. Very, very interesting. We've got Pancho Carter back there. We've got A.J. Foyt. You know, uh, you sort of benefited by A.J.'s mistake today, didn't you? Unfortunately, we did, I think. The weather's... Uh been bad for everybody and it's going to cause some problems for these guys tomorrow the pressure is really going to be on now i'm not talking about that aj said he's dial wrong on the wastegate or something he said he made a mistake so that's why he came in and it just gave you the pull otherwise you wouldn't have gotten it well i, I just know. said I, that i hope uh, aj gets a chance to run real hard tomorrow and let's see if he can do it yeah he could set a new track record tomorrow right uh, I'm looking forward to it. I want to see him do it. I'd like to see him do it. But oh, there's no taking Tom off the pole. Yet yeah, yours. <laughs> so we've got 20 qualifiers, a little bit of rain, lots of action tomorrow, and we hope you'll be able to join us. We'll be here for a qualification report live on our network beginning at 4.30 tomorrow afternoon. And we actually, if it rains tomorrow, we've got plenty of stuff we can show you that happened today. Unfortunately, we don't have enough time. 
to give a rundown and show you all the runs that were completed today. But 20 guys, are, actually 19 guys and one lady in the show. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, that sort of wraps it up for today from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And Tom Spiva, Craig Roberts, and I will see you tomorrow from Indianapolis. And of course, above all, We know you'll want to see our leader, your pace car, the 25th anniversary Corvette, on display now at your greater Indianapolis Chevrolet dealers. And we hope you'll reflect on our other winners, the third generation Monte Carlo, the personal luxury car. The ever popular Camaro, truly a driver's car for those who enjoy it most. And our new limited 500 edition pickup, built to stay tough. You'll flip at the pace setter savings going on now at these and all greater Indianapolis Chevrolet dealers. Bob Baker Chevrolet, Bill Child Chevrolet, and Bud Wolf Chevrolet.